Welcome to my 37th tutoring session in A-Level Chemistry. In this video, I'll talk about quantum numbers. Don't forget to subscribe my channel, share, like, comment and watch the full video. In this session, I made an attempt to relate the concept of quantum numbers to real life examples to make it memorable to the students. Atom is the smallest unit of an element. It has a central nucleus and contains positively charged protons and electrically neutral neutrons. With the negatively charged electron orbiting around the nucleus in their respective shells or energy levels. I have color coded the subatomic particles. Proton is positively charged, neutron is electrically neutral and electron is negatively charged. There are four quantum numbers commonly used to describe the electrons in an atom. They are principal quantum number, angular momentum quantum number, magnetic quantum number and spin quantum number. Quantum numbers describe the properties and characteristics of electrons in an atom or a molecule. Some of the atoms regularly encountered in organic chemistry are carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and nitrogen while some of the molecules commonly encountered in organic chemistry are water molecule, carbon dioxide, oxygen, nitrogen and hydrogen molecule. Here is an interesting analogy comparing the atomic structure to that of a school building. The school building is analogous to an atom with the floors of the building representing the shells or energy levels of the atom. Classrooms of the building represent the subshells. The chairs represent the orbital and the chairs occupied by students represent the orbitals occupied by electrons. The atom represents the school building. The shells of the atom represent the floors of the building. The subshell represent the classrooms. The orbitals represent the chairs in the classroom and the chairs occupied by students represent the orbitals occupied by electrons. Now where is the electron in an atom present? Now electrons are present in the shells or energy levels. When n is equal to 1, that is the first energy level. The first energy level is also given by symbol k. n is equal to 2. That is the second shell or the second energy level. It's also given by the symbol L. Now within the shells you find the subshells. And the subshells are indicated by different letters. S, P, D and F. The first shell has one subshell. That is 1S. The second shell has two subshells. 2S and 2P. While the third shell has three subshells 3s, 3p, and 3d. Now, the general formula to calculate the maximum number of electrons in each shell is 2n square. So, if you want to calculate the number of electrons present in the second shell, use the formula 2n square and deduce the value of n with 2 because we want to calculate the number of electrons present in the second shell. So, you end up with 2 times 4, that is 8 electron and within the subshells you find the orbitals. The S subshell has 1 S orbital, P subshell has 3 P orbitals oriented along the XY and Z axis. D subshell has 5 D orbitals 
and the f subshell has 7f orbitals. Now the number of electrons in an orbital can be 0, 1 or 2, not more than 2. So no more than 2 electrons can occupy an orbital. Now orbital is denoted by different notations. It can be represented by line notation or oval notation. A line notation represents an orbital. It's also represented by an oval. So indicating that there are no electrons in the orbital. So a line notation simply represents an empty orbital. While the line notation with one arrow represents an orbital containing only one electron. It's also represented by an oval containing one arrow. So arrow represents an electron. So line notation with two arrows with opposite spins represents an orbital with two electrons of opposite spins. So line notation represents an empty orbital. Line notation with one arrow represents an orbital with one electron. And line notation with two arrows represents an orbital with two electrons of opposite spins. So where are the electrons present in an atom? They are present in the shell. And within the shell, they are present in the subshells. And where in the subshells? They are present in the orbitals. So the electrons are finely housed or seated in the orbitals. So the final destination of electron in an atom is the orbitals. So atom, shell, subshell and orbitals. So atomic number of sodium is 11. So atomic number is nothing but the total number of protons present in the nucleus of an atom. Now in an electrically neutral atom, the total number of protons in the nucleus is equal to the total number of electrons present in the respective shells or energy levels. So it is the attraction and balance between the oppositely charged protons and electrons that holds the atom together and maintains the electrical neutrality. So now the task at hand is to arrange or distribute these 11 electrons in the respective shells of the sodium atom. So electronic configuration of sodium is 1s2, 2s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. So observe the orbital column where you can find two electrons are placed in the 1s orbital. Again two electrons are placed in the 2s orbital. Six electrons are present in the or placed in the 3p orbitals and only one electron is placed in the 3s orbital present in the third shell or third energy level. So a line notation represents an orbital while an arrow represents electron. Now quantum numbers identify or describes the electron in an atom. Quantum numbers provide information about the energy level or shell of an electron, subshells, shapes of orbitals, number of orbitals, orientations of orbitals in space and spin state of an electron in an atom or molecule. So there are four quantum numbers, principal quantum number, azimuthal quantum number, magnetic quantum number and spin quantum number. Principal quantum number is represented by letter N and the principal quantum number is always a positive integer and starts from 1. Azimuthal quantum number is represented by letter L and the value of azimuthal quantum number depends on the principal quantum number N and the value of azimuthal quantum number ranges from 0 to N minus 1. Magnetic quantum number is represented by symbol M sub L with the values of magnetic quantum numbers ranging from minus L to plus L. 
while the spin quantum number is represented by symbol m sub s and the spin quantum number describes the spin state of an electron in an atom. So let me explain the significance of these four quantum numbers to begin with the principal quantum number. The principal quantum number is represented by letter n and the principal quantum number is always a positive integer and starts from 1. The principal quantum number it determines the energy level or shell of an electron as the value of principal quantum number increases the energy level also increases and the distance from the nucleus that is the distance of the shell from the nucleus also increases with increase in the principal quantum number so as the value of principal quantum number increases the energy level increases and the distance of the shell from the nucleus also increases. So 1 represents the first shell or the first energy level, 2 represents the second shell or the second energy level, 3 represents the third shell or the third energy level. So the energy levels or shells are numbered inside out progressing away from the nucleus. Azimuthal quantum number is represented by letter L and the value of azimuthal quantum number depends on the principal quantum number. The value of azimuthal quantum number ranges from 0 to n minus 1. Azimuthal quantum number it defines this option and describes the shapes of orbitals occupied by electrons. When n is equal to 1 L will be 0 and it describes the S orbital when n is equal to 2 L is equal to 0 and 1 and it describes the S and P orbital when n is equal to 3 L is equal to 0 1 2 and it describes the S P and D orbital when L is equal to 4 L is equal to 0 1 2 and 3 and it describes the S P D and F orbital. Now 0 corresponds to spherically symmetrical S orbital, 1 corresponds to dumbbell shaped P orbital, 2 corresponds to double dumbbell shaped D orbital and 3 corresponds to a weirder looking F orbital with a complex structure. Now magnetic quantum number is represented by letter M sub L with the values of magnetic quantum number ranging from minus L to plus L including 0. Now the magnetic quantum number it determines the number of orbitals. It also specifies the orientation of orbitals in different directions in space. For example, in a P subshell, the magnetic quantum number M sub L can take values of minus 1, 0 and plus 1 corresponding to 2px, 2py and 2pz orbitals that are oriented along x, y and z axis. Now s orbital in the first energy level has only one orientation as the s orbital is spherically symmetrical. In the second energy level, the P subshell it has 3P orbitals, 2PX, 2PY and 2PZ oriented along X, Y and Z axis. So there are 3P orbitals with 3 different orientations in the second energy level. Now the D orbitals, now there are 5D orbitals in the third energy level with five different orientations and in the fourth shell or energy level there are seven f orbitals oriented along seven different directions. Moving on to the spin quantum number. Now spin quantum number is represented by letter m 
surface and spin quantum number describes the spin state of an electron in an atom or molecule. So what you see here is an s orbital occupied by two electrons of opposite spins. As we all know, electron is a negatively charged particle. It has a natural property called spin. So if the electron spins in the anti-clockwise direction, it gives a spin value of minus half represented by down arrow. And if the electron spins in the clockwise direction, it gives a spin value of plus half denoted by or represented by up arrow. So electron is negatively charged. It has a nat natural property called spin. Now remember any charged particle or any charged body in motion generates a magnetic field and negatively charged electron is no exception. So when negatively charged electron spins, it is in a state of motion, it generates a magnetic field. And similarly, the other electron in the same orbital, it spins in the opposite direction and as a result, it generates a magnetic field. So what you see here is two electrons with opposite spins in an S orbital. And as a result of spins in opposite directions, these two electrons, they generate two different magnetic fields that are opposite to each other and therefore they attract each other with the north poles facing south and the south pole facing north. So two electrons spin in opposite direction, generate two different magnetic fields that are opposite and as a result they attract each other. Now this is the reason why though the electrons are of similar charge, they exist together in the same orbital without being pushed apart. So atom has a shell, within the shell you find the subshell and within the subshell you find orbitals and the orbitals are occupied by electrons. And in case of spool building, you find the floors and each floor has classrooms and each classroom has chairs and these chairs are occupied by students. Now chairs represent the orbitals and chairs occupied by student represent the orbitals occupied by electrons. So quantum numbers provide information about the shell, subshell, orbital shape, number of orbitals, orientation of orbital and spin state of electrons within an atom. To summarize, quantum numbers provide a framework for understanding the energy levels, orbital shapes, orientation of orbitals and spin states of electrons which are fundamental to chemical bonding, reactivity and properties of elements. So together these four quantum numbers uniquely identify the electronic configuration of an atom and determine the arrangement of electrons in its orbitals. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll meet you in my next interesting tutorial session.